Hey everyone, it's Hajra. I haven't been on YouTube for a while because my mom was sick. She had cancer surgery and then she was on chemo for several months, so I haven't been able to post anything on YouTube as a result of that. Um, right now her cancer's in remission and we really hope that, um, God willing, that it's going to stay that way. And that's all I'm going to say about that right now. But anyway, I'm really happy to be back and making these videos. Um, it's going to take me a little while <laughs> to shake the rust off and get back in the swing of things. So I'm going to start with actually an easy art journal entry. I really like doing little pieces in, in my art journal. I typically do a lot of harder pieces that are more realistic and a lot more involved. I actually wanted to keep my art journals a lot more low key than that. And it actually the choice was kind of made for me because the paper in these journals isn't as nice as Arch's watercolor paper. So as a result of that, it doesn't actually take the kind of beading when you're like adding layers and removing and lifting and that kind of stuff like that. So it's actually easier to say, well, I have to keep these pieces easier. Um, it's actually comfortable to revisit some of your favorite children's books every now and again too. When you reread something that made you really happy when you were younger, it'll make you happy again when you're older and get some of those feelings back. So um, this is Gink. He's actually a black cat from a lovely series that I read growing up. It was part of the Dory the Little Witch series and these books are really old. They actually started being published in the 60s and I was born in the 80s but it was really nice that they still have these books at the library and the author Patricia Coombs was actually publishing these books all the way up until I think sometime in the early 90s. I'm probably gonna do a few more entries on Dory and her cat just because I find them really exciting. In this piece, Gink, her black cat, is just hiding behind this chair. Because it's Inktober, I'm gonna try to put up as many ink pieces this month as I possibly can, and I'll try to make them quick and easy, otherwise I won't get very many up. For this piece, it was already inked in my journal, but I didn't color it, so I thought I'd just color it with inks on screen. And so here it is, and I'm gonna use a limited palette of these inks that I have, and these inks are actually water soluble. And that means that they're not, they're not permanent. The problem with water soluble inks is unlike watercolor, they will keep lifting up off of the page. So if you wet colors around them, or if you wet them again, you can't actually layer as well as you would with watercolor because watercolor does sort of stain and sink into the paper. I like my Phil Martin's permanent inks much better. These inks, I don't know what brand they are. I think they're similar to those little ink sheets that you can buy from Peerless. I don't know if that's a problem with Peerless, but I would assume they would be a problem with any water soluble ink that it does lift off. I think a witch's house would probably have, instead of like just wood, colored wood, <laughs> I think it would have like witchy wood. So I made it like this purple wood. And I also decided that the cushion should also like sort of match his eyes, Gink's eyes, which are yellow. So I'm going back and adding in yellow, yellow, green, and a little bit of purple because purple and yellow are complements. So the opposite of yellow on the color wheel is purple. So it makes a really good shadow for the yellow. And I'm also gonna give him a little bit of a purple shadow as well. And I think it's looking already nice and spooky and simple, but also inky and washy. And I think it's also very Halloween-y, the whole ink thing. Cause I think if there's any medium that really comes across as sort of like a drippy, spooky medium, I think ink probably does that. It's perfectly well suited to have Inktober in October when there's also Halloween which is actually one of my favorite holidays. When Patricia Kuhn illustrated them, she typically seemed to have used like color pencil and pencils and sort of more dry media. And it's interesting to try to make up these colors and figure out how to do it with wet media. Also, I guess there was a limited color format at the time or something for her publisher or for her books because the books were not in full color. There was a few colors apart from the black and white, like say orange and blue, and that would be pretty much it in the book. Couldn't find these books at the library near me, so I actually had to go on Amazon and try to buy them just so I could read some of these stories again because I was really having like a craving for them, like the way you would have for like, I don't know, cookies or something. And so I went and found a few of these books and gosh, if they're not just ridiculous expensive because they're out of print so I only bought like four or five of these books um, I think there's like 21 total but they'll have to do for now because they're just way too expensive for me to afford like these used books that are like hundreds of dollars you know just can't do it so what I've done with the background is I've added in water and then blue 
And then I'm trying to give a little bit of this feathery blue edge with it, which is what happens when you put in wet and wet, you'll have like this feathering edge with the ink. And this happens more with ink than it does with watercolor because the ink is a dye and it disperses much more readily than watercolor. So it moves in that feathery pattern on top of the paper. And I'm going to now add green on top of it because I actually think the blue looks a little bit too sunny and not spooky enough for Gink and this sort of witch world that him and Dory live in. So I've gone back and added green over it. It's more of a yellow green, just like the chair, so that it adds more of that sort of yellow Halloween lantern look to it. It doesn't work as well as arches or arch paper. So I've just decided to do easier pieces, which makes it actually more fun and exciting than doing more complicated pieces like I do on my nicer watercolor paper. And now I'm gonna add more blue on top of it. I want it to be blue, I don't want it to be green, I just don't want it to be so blue, I want it to be more of a blue-green. And this isn't the Pentallic journal, I, this is the Moleskin journal, I believe, and the, while it does, as you can see, take watercolor just fine, it just isn't as good at lifting or blending and everything else that you would expect from arches paper so by the way i did that inking of the cat in the chair i did that with a zig marker and that's why it's not budging if i did it with a water soluble marker those lines would have run make sure that the the line drawing and in ink is done in a marker that does not run unless you want it to run it feels really weird to be talking to myself while i'm doing a voiceover for this video because i haven't done it in a long time but again, I am happy to be doing this. I really missed it. I really missed doing these videos. Didn't realize how cathartic they were until I couldn't do them anymore. So you can see all that ink has gotten this really cool sort of hard edges and feathered edges. And it's also very bright because it's dye based. So that's another nice thing about ink is that it gives you these really vibrant colors. But ink is much more fugitive than watercolor. If you have artist quality watercolor, it will be light fast. So there you are. Hope you guys enjoy this short Inktober demo and also my return to YouTube after so many months. And again, hopefully I can be regularly posting up here again. I'm really looking forward to it. Hope you keep watching and liking and subscribing and I'll see you again in my next video. Good luck to everybody else on their epic painting adventures.